Our world-class rose garden reopened in 2018 and it's looking pretty spectacular. So our curator of collections, Alex Henderson, is joining us to tell us a little bit more. We're into our second flush of roses this season. So Alex, can you tell us about some of the successes that we're seeing in the garden this year? So I think the key success is resilience, Jen. You know, the collection's been through its first really, really cold winter. Uh, it's gone through a drought this year. Everything's performing really well. It's flowering really well. Everything's growing just as you would expect it to. So, you know, through that great sustainable rose choices that we made in the planning phases, we've got this really great rose garden now. So resilience is the key. I heard that our rose garden has little to no black spot. How common is that and why is it important? Well, I really wish the garden had no black spot, but it does have a little. But again, you know, it goes back to the sustainable rose choice. When we were selecting the roses originally to plant in the garden, we selected known cultivars that have improved resistance to black spot. So that's really helped. We've also gone through a drought kind of summer as well. And when you get those types of summers, you get less black spot. But it, really, it comes back down to that resilience notion again. Is there anything new that we're doing this year? That's a great question, yes. So we employed a, a student entomologist from the University of Guelph this year. Um, we've got a lot of companion plants in the garden. We're hoping that's bringing in beneficial insects to help with the pest control program. And sure enough, she's gone through the garden and done an inventory and the companion plants are really bringing in a really diverse lot of beneficial insects that are really helping us to reduce using sprays in the garden. One thing that I think is really fascinating about our garden is that it's a living experiment and after evaluations, we replace plants that aren't performing with new ones. Are there any new candidates that we're watching for? Yeah, so last year there was a couple of roses that we weren't really over happy with the performance. They were a little black spot prone. So what we've done is replaced them. Uh, we've used a couple of Cordes roses that have got a known history of black spot uh, tolerance and resistance. And one of them is called Lion's Fairy Tale. The other one is called Fire Opal. Uh, they're in year two of being planted and they're performing really well this year. So we're really happy with that. Are there any standout companion plants in the garden? Yes, so we've got Echinacea pallida and we've got uh, butterfly weed and they're really bringing in a lot of beneficial insects. They're bringing in a lot of native insects, which is what we want to see in the garden as well. So they're performing really well. They're doing exactly what we want them to do. But we've also noticed there's a particular companion plant called fleece flower that seems to be a Japanese bee or magnet. So that might be one of the plants that we think about replacing further downstream and also using it as a notion that this could be a sacrificial trap plant that if we plant it on the margins of the garden, it might bring the beetle out of the garden, so. What's one important learning that folks can use at home in their own gardens? Right, so again, it goes back to this notion of sustainability and resilience. If you come and visit the garden, you can look at the plant labels, you can figure out which roses you like. They're all available locally. So if you want a sustainable, resilient garden, go out and purchase these roses and you too can have a pesticide-free garden. Thank you, Alex. And the Rose Garden in Hendry Park is open daily during regular operating hours, and you can visit our tea house as well. So I hope you can join us. If you'd like to learn more about the fascinating history of RBG's Rose Garden, please visit us at rbg.ca.